Okay, time for class. We're live. Um, lights blinking. Um, numbers are counting down. Uh, thank you all for being here. Um, it is the 1st of October. Uh, it's um, getting late into the night, and so I wanted to make a video while it was still uh, the 1st of October. It's um, like 11.22 now. Uh, um, it's my birthday. I'm f 52. Actually, at 11.59 p.m. is my birthday. So I'm actually at my birthday now. Um, and so uh, I just had wanted to make um, a video. This is part to say thank you to all my subscribers and everyone who's here um, and who's been with me for... Um, you know, for a short period of time, and the few subscribers who've been here for a while, since the beginning. Witchy Vibes 11, uh, she's like my first subscriber, um, back two years ago, I think. Um, so anyway, so thank you to everyone who's here, and, um, much love to everyone. Um, so, I wanted to do, um, a video that is basically relatively short, this may be probably going to be a two-part series, that is a video of just an article. Um, and so this is one of those uh, video mini-series worth uh, making um, relative to the Schumann Resonance. Um, and... Um, you know, I need to have content for my channel. Uh, there's plenty of discussion on the Schumann that I can have, and I do have, and I put it in comments and readily everywhere. But this is one of those, well, this is kind of a birthday present from me to you. Um, I guess you will. So this is going to be of me doing a, a, a read-through of this article uh, called the Schumann Resonances and Their Effect on Human Bioregulation. Um, so, in other places, I have mentioned this article, and I've gone through it really briefly, but this one I want to... It's a kind of lengthy article, so, um, again, I'm pretty sure it's going to be going to have to be more than one 33-minute video. Because um, uh, there's pictures as well. <laughs> um and so, um, so I wanted to go through this because it talks about the brain waves, the states of the brain waves at different frequencies, and this is definitely directly related to comments I have seen uh, to people who have um, also uh, asked to join the um, the Facebook uh, page on the Schumann Resonance Harmonics. Um, have said, you know, the the two in the answer to the question. Everyone asks. I answer that one. Que I ask that one question. What are you here for? That's the one question I ask, and I just gauge people's response uh, to that question. And some people have said in that comment there, and in, in they're wanting to learn about how the Schumer resonances are affecting people and the animal. So this video is in response to th those people specifically, as well as my commitment to uh, bringing up uh, articles that are related to the biohealth and bioregulation of people. Right. So um, I'm going to read this. First, I'm going to take a sip of some coffee. Okay, and I have said in comments before, and I will say this now, that I, this is some pretty heavy reading. I have a lot of, I, I'm the Schumann expert because I do a lot of reading, and I've I've made videos of the browser dumps and all that stuff, and so this is what I immerse myself in is readings on this, and so, um, that's why it's important to share this, but it's some heavy reading. And, and it's scientific, it's technical. Um, and it's not math technical, but it's some technical shit. 
and I use the music as a way of kind of softening around the edges and kind of kind of clearing my head um, and I'm, I'm offering that to you as well and I'm hoping to give this video and uh, the music as well in that spirit of allowing your head to just kind of clear through some of what I'm you know reading um, and hopefully it'll sink in with that um, that understanding. All right, so thank you all for being here. Uh, let me get my poker. Um, and uh, let me now make this bigger. So, this comes from the bio, of course. All right. So, this is from the uh, BRMI, which is the Bioregulatory Medicine Institute, supporting the science of self-healing. Um, and their website is BR, I'll leave it in the link, you can't see it here in the video, BRMI.online post. All right. Like I said, the link will be in the video uh, the description. So this is uh, 7th of February. Um, all right, so it says basically human resonances and their effect on human bioregulation. <clears throat> The Schumann resonances, or frequencies, are quasi-standing electromagnetic waves that exist in the cavity, or space, between the surface of the Earth and the ionosphere. In 1952, German physicist Professor Winifred Otto Schumann of the Technical University of Munich began attempting to answer whether the Earth itself has a frequency, a pulse. His assumption about the existence of this frequency came from his understanding that when a sphere exists inside another sphere, electrical tension is created. Since the negatively charged Earth eg exists inside the positively charged ionosphere, there must be tension between the two, giving the Earth a specific frequency. Through a series of calculations, he was able to deduce a frequency he believed was the pulse of the Earth ionosphere space. Two years later, in 1954, Schumann and Herbert Koenig reported reliable and predictable frequencies in the atmosphere that existed in the cavity, or space, between the surface of the Earth and the ionosphere. Though several frequencies occur between 6 and 50 cycles per second, the fundamental frequency they found to be 7.83 hertz. And they give the reference of um, footnote of 1. That's, their, that's what the 1 is. This cavity is naturally excited by energy from lightning discharges and radio atmosphere signals or spherics. A spheric is a broadband electromagnetic impulse that occurs as a result of natural atmospheric lightning discharges. This causes the Earth ionosphere cavity to ring like a bell at a specific at a specific frequency oh at specific frequencies, resulting in peaks in the noise spectrum. Schumann resonances are not measurable all the time but have to be excited to be observed. They are primarily related to electrical activity in the atmosphere, particularly during times of, an in, of intense lightning activity. At any given moment, about 2,000 thunderstorms roll over Earth, producing some 50 flashes of lightning every second. Each lightning burst creates electromagnetic waves that begin to circle around Earth, captured between Earth's surface and a boundary about 60 miles up. Some of the waves, if they have just the right wavelength combined, increasing in strength 
to create a repeating atmospheric heartbeat known as Schumann resonance. This resonance provides a useful tool to analyze Earth's weather, its atmos its electric environment, sorry, and to help and to even help determine what types of atoms and molecules exist in Earth's atmosphere reference to. Right. So then they give us this picture. Big ass picture. Lightning photo courtesy of Noah. That's lovely. Alright. On with the text. The waves created by lightning do not look like the up and down waves of the ocean, but they still oscillate with regions of greater energy and lesser energy. These waves remain trapped inside an atmospheric ceiling created by the lower edge of the ionosphere, uh, hyphen, a part of the atmosphere filled with charged particles, which begins about 60 miles up in the sky. In this case, the sweet spot for resonance requires the wave to be as long um, or, or twice three times as long, etc., uh, parenthetically, as the circumference of Earth. Okay, so a multiple of as big as or twice the, the size or three times the size of Earth, right? So the wave length, um, which in this case, I think they estimated like 100,000 kilometers. I'm, I'm trying to remember what that base, base number is for the wavelengths. This is an extremely low frequency wave that can be as low as 8 hertz, some 100,000 times lower than the lowest frequency radio waves used to send signals to an AM FM radio. As this wave flows around Earth, it hits itself again at the perfect spot such that the crests and troughs are aligned. Thus, Waves act in resonance with each other to pump up the original signal. And that, to give you references two and three. All right. Ahead. All right, there we go. The ionosphere is part of Earth's upper atmosphere where extreme ultraviolet and solar ray, solar, I'm sorry, X-ray, solar radiation, ionizes the, the atoms and molecules, thus creating a layer of electrons. Right, did you get all that? Uh, it stretches from approximately 60 miles above the surface of the Earth to the edge of space. Other phenomena, such as energetic charged particles and cosmic rays, also have an ionizing effect and can contribute to the ionosphere. This dynamic region grows and shrinks and further divides into subregions based on solar conditions and is a critical link in the chain of Sun-Earth interactions. All right. My arm's killing me. Let me move over. All right. <laughs> Due to spectral variability in solar radiation and density of various constituents in the atmosphere, there are layers created within the ionosphere called the D and E and F layers. The electron density is highest in the upper or F region, and this region exists during both daytime and nighttime. During the day, it is ionized by solar radiation, during the night by, co by cosmic rays. The D region disappears during the night compared to the daytime, and the E region becomes weakened. Highly charged ions and free electrons fill the ionospheric layers, creating a spectral power station. Schumann frequencies are determined by the size of the Earth ionosphere cavity and can, be, can vary slightly from a variety of other factors, such as solar-induced perturbations, 
to the ionosphere, which compressed the upper wall of the closed cavity. Okay. Okay. I have a visual guide here. All right. <coughs> Pardon me. Sorry about that. When a solar flare occurs, the flare's X-ray energy increases the ionization of all the layers, including the D-layer. Thus, D, the D-layer, now becomes strong enough to reflect the radio waves at a lower altitude. So, during a solar flare, the waves travel less distance, I, uh, in parentheses, bouncing off D instead of E or F, which are further out, uh, period. The signal strength usually increases because the waves don't use energy penetrating the D layer. However, the strength of very low frequency waves that is, radio waves in the range of 3 to 30 kilohertz, can either increase or decrease during a flare. The signal strength could decrease because the lower the waves reflect, the more collisions or interferences of waves there will be because of the thicker atmosphere. These wave collisions can result in destructive interference. All right, so they're giving us a example of this is the Schumann resonances here and these are destructive waves that cancel each other out right? so that's what you're saying these are constructive interference or wave co collisions that's, that's the Schumann resonances that are right there and then you have dissonant waves that are out of phase with each other, basically. They're destructive interference, and they cancel each other out here. There's no nothing that... It, it creates a nothing. All right. All right, so they're giving you a nice diagram of the Schumann resonances. All right. This is the Earth ionosphere cavity, and the lightning. Obviously, it's lightning from the ionosphere. And then it, you know, causes these waves, standing waves, and some of them are, you know, the dissonant, consonant, they, they, some of them cancel each other out, and some of them reinforce each other, you know. Here's another diagram of uh, the Schumann resonances. Um, and then this whoop, shows you the layers of, you know, you have the troposphere, the, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the D layer, you know, they're giving you a really nice diagram here. Sorry, this thing is going out of focus. Like, there you go. And then as you go higher up, you know, you get to the F layer way out here. That's where it's supposed to be the space shuttle. You know, 180 miles, 100, 280 kilometers, you know. So, the thermosphere, the mesosphere, right. So, the ionosphere is way out here. So, you know, way, 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 way out here. So that is where the, the lightning discharges come from, the, the ionosphere, okay, the D layer, then you have the E layer, the, the D layer, depending on what time of day. So you have to understand that it is these, based on the time of day, it's these layers being there or not being there that you'll get the Schumann signal, all right? So that what you call, di um, we call diurnal variation, that's what that, those layers being there make a big difference of whether you see nothing on the Schumann happening because there's kind of a dull spot or a blank spot, that's because these layers have come down and they've interfered with the signal, all right? So generally speaking, it's uh, during uh, the nighttime, I shouldn't say interfered with, it's increased or amplified the signal. Uh, during the nighttime, you don't have, I think the nighttime is when you, you have, uh, 
trying to remember when you have the the the, the Dean E layers, if they're um, during the nighttime or the daytime. Hold on a sec. Okay, we're back. Um, once the sun pops out, it kind of scatters the layers away. The sun, the sun's energy, kind of. Uh, dissipates the layers and then at night the layers come out um, and so that's where there's a difference between the day and the night is more activity than the daytime is facing the the Sun so you're getting a lot more of that energy coming in right. so anyway so this is where they're showing you with the layers depending on the time of the day uh, diurnal, diurnal variations um, it says uh, Good golly. I like it when I don't do that. <laughs> Sorry, action figure. Um, <clears throat> scientists had thought Schumann resonance was confined within the atmosphere and could only be observable from the planet's surface using NASA's Vector Electric Field Instrument, VEFI, aboard a U.S. Air Force satellite. Scientists recently discovered that energy from the resonance sometimes leaks beyond Earth and can be detected from above, providing a new tool to analyze the chemical and physical makeup of the atmosphere. Which is very fascinating. That's a satellite that's taking shots of the resonance from space. Right. Much of the research, back to the text, much of the research in, in the last 20 years has been conducted by the Department of the Navy, which investigates extremely low frequency communication with satellites. Today, Schumann resonances are recorded at many separate research stations around the world. The sensors used to measure Schumann resonances typically consist of two horizontal magnetic inductive coils for measuring the north, south, and east-west components of the magnetic field, and a vertical electric dipole antenna for measuring the, uh, the, the vertical component of the electric field. Specialized receivers and antennas are needed to detect and record Schumann resonances. All right. Which I have said before. That's a graph of the Schumann resonances. Okay, you see there's this spike at 50, this crazy spike, because they don't have a filter there. Right. So, on the text, Ooh. sorry. Though 7.83 is considered the fundamental of Schumann resonance, other frequencies occur between 6 and 50 cycles per second. Specifically, 7.8, 14, 20, 26, 33, 39, and 45 hertz, with a daily variation of about plus or minus 5 hertz. All right. So plus or minus, so it can go up and down uh, plus or minus 5 hertz. That's as much as it's ever going to rise, 0.5. These frequencies function as a background frequency influencing the uh, biological circuitry of much of the life on Earth. The amount of resonance fluctuates as the ionosphere becomes more or less dense, which depends largely on the amount of solar radiation striking it. Another influence is, is that the world's three lightning hotspots, which are Asia, Africa, and South America, also follow a day-night cycle and are seasonal as well. Thus, the peaks of radio signal strength at the Schumann resonance follow a consistently shifting but reasonably predictable schedule. Okay, and they're giving you this diagram here. Okay, showing you the Schumann resonances, right? the first, the fundamentals. So this line is purple, that one's red, that one's green. So that's the purple, this one's the red, 
This one's the green. All right. Schumann himself, Professor Schumann himself, interested was interested in the biological effects of spherics in general, and his student and later colleague, Herbert Koenig, continued his work. Schumann and Koenig's work revealed relationships between Schumann resonances and life on Earth. Their research spans from an influence on yeast cells and bacteria, as well as plants and animals to humans. Herbert Koenig, who became Schumann's successor at Munich University, discovered and further demonstrated a clear link between Schumann resonances and brain rhythms. He compared human EEG readings with natural electromagnetic fields of the environment and found that the so-called alpha waves during brain activity lie in the same frequency range as the first two modes of the Schumann resonance. He speculated that this is possibly no coincidence, but a human adaptation to the electromagnetic environment over the long course of evolution. In this border area between physics, biology, and medicine, there are perhaps still interesting results forthcoming, and they give references of Six and seven. Footnotes. Okay. I've seen. All right. So this was on the front. So you see, they're just giving a. a, 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 a kind of a, a, a. What do you call it? A. Um, oh, I can't even come up with the word. Like a, a schematic diagram here. The Earth, the different layers of the ionosphere, the density that its wave affects your brain wave as well. I thought this was a very clever picture. And so I used it with the, um, the music um, wave in the, um, the picture. All right, so having a hard time thinking of words. All right, so that's why I use that picture, because I like it and uh, it lines up with the, um, the music waves. All right, so onward number. Koenig and his colleagues described the remarkable similarities of spectral power density profiles you got all that? and patterns between the Earth ionosphere resonance and human brain activity which also share magnitudes for both electric field and magnetic field components. Since then, the phenomena that brain rhythms may overlap and become synchronous with ultra-low frequency electromagnetic activity occurring within this resonant cavity has been observed and re reiterated by other scientists. To test direct synchrony between magnetic processes occurring in the Earth ionosphere cavity and the human brain, Soroka and Persinger measured simultaneously the Schumann resonance and brain electrical activity of a single individual who was sitting quietly outside with eyes closed. Uh, 11 reference. Results of the analysis indicate the presence of transient periods of harmonic synchrony that appeared when cross-channel coherence was computed between I'm just trying to follow along, between the caudal root mean square signal derived from the brain and the extremely low frequency magnetic activity occurring in the proximal environment. These periods of harmonic synchron synchrony lasted approximately 200 to 300, uh, I guess, uh, microseconds and consisted of simultaneous coherence within the 7-8 comma, 1314, and 1920 hertz bands. The coherence magnitudes were like those reported earlier by Pobakenko and colleagues. All right, let me scoop this up. Oh, sorry about that. All behaviors, including consciousness, are generated by and 
correlated with brain activity. The activity can be conceived as complex matrices of electromagnetic patterns and their associated chemical changes. Weak intensity complex magnetic fields generated by the Earth and by human technology affects consciousness and experience. The critical factor is not the intensity of the fields, but their patterns and the information contained within the patterns. Those patterns that are most likely the natural temporal configurations of brain activity are most effective. And I would maintain, this is a sidebar, part of what he's talking about are the patterns showing up on the Schumann. So let's give a... Right. So we're talking about patterns. All right. In here... Right, so we're talking about patterns in here. These areas here of the white, the yellow, the red, and the green, you know, these amplitude spikes up, up and down, all right? And the quality, the quality is the magnetics, right? So this is what goes horizontally, all right? So you gotta remember that. All right, so part of the pattern, these are horizontal, these are upright. All right, so that's how you're reading these patterns, is that it's not that these are necessarily lower frequencies, that these are supposed to be spread out wider than the amplitude, the spikes of amplitude. That's magnetics that are caught up in the, in, in, in the resonance. That's the resonance. These are the resonances. And those are mid-grade uh, magnetics that are caught up in there. All right, so let's go back to the reading. All right. So I'm at 33 minutes. That is the end of the reading that I'm going to have. There is more to this that I want to get to. So